So there are elements of interfaces all around us. It's not just the web, but I think in this course we mostly talk about interfaces on the web. But if you look around, there are tons of buttons. Here's one that's uh, very confusing for me. What does that mean? Um, so the feedback, not that great there. But on the web, you have some... It's not built out of bricks and mortar, so there's no cost. Of Neville Brody said that the web is the paint that never dries. So you can always change it, which is um, uh, a really good opportunity, but also it, this project will never stop, so never make it final there. You iterate it, that's what they call it. So um, I do user interfaces, but when people ask me what does that mean, I can just tell them it's sort of like the buttons on the web, but obviously it's a lot more on the web than just buttons because we have this whole interface which is kind of the link between us and the computer in the communication. When we ask something, we interact with that interface to ask the question and then we get uh, feedback from the computer back. So we have to think of this digital as um, recreating the real world that if we press something, we want to know that we did actually press this because we don't have a physical element, but this computer, we have to kind of design it as if it was a mechanical, physical machine so that we can understand it, that we can uh, see that our actions actually did something. Um, Design-wise, now, for me, I always like to think about a little bit more on, on an abstract because if you, if you think about it, like what would this design look like a dance or a song Every element has to fit into your goal and the message that you're talking about. If you're writing a classical song, you use different melodies than if you're writing a rap song. You have different elements in the language than you have a folk song. These are a whole list of the user interface elements that I could come up with. I'm sure there are a lot more. But um, one of the... I start with an accordion here is um, when you click open those elements and then you close them with a carrot. You see those little arrows on the on the side or there's a, a minus and a plus that makes sense too. And uh, the advantages are that at first you don't have that many options to choose from. You can categorize sort of your fields which makes it easier for someone to make their first decision. On the drawback you're hiding some of your content. New icons and convention developed and they have sometimes funny names like uh, the burger icon we kind of got used to as being the menu by now. The kebab menu isn't really a full menu. It's more like having the option settings. I don't know, I've never really seen that, but the bento menu you see at the Google because it's not only a menu, it's a set of tools and those apps look more like squares. So they, they, I think they abstract the little apps that you look at when you look on the phone and you see those apps. That's called the bento menu. Going back to the most basic is buttons. They have kind of a history with all these um, crazy beveled edges and shadow effects to make them look more 3D and also how to press. Um, then lately there was a trend towards a more flat design. There were pros and cons. It kind of takes out all of this heavy, clutter, ugly, stuffy, um, dusty, um, beveled button look. But now you don't really know if you pressed it or not, or if this is a button that you can press. We kind of know, but um, it might be confusing to some people. Um, there's also another one uh, called Skeuomorphic, where it, that's the style meant to be really, really um, realistic looking, like the actual buttons of a radio or a calculator or so. Here is a, somebody that designed very cool looking buttons. It's kind of a, a, a a merge between the flat and the skeuomorphic or the really beveled 3D looking button. Um, they call them new morphic in this case, but very modern and very slick looking. These are just some examples. On the bottom here though, you have to be careful sometimes. Uh, on the left, these buttons are confusing because you don't know which button is actually active at this point. You don't know if the filled in or the, or the empty one signifies the, the active or the inactive. Uh, state so you have to be really clear in in sort of these toggle situations which I'm coming to in a second too. Um, so every button has kind of uh, three states: the normal button, 
the hover when you go over it, and then the activate where you actually click it in that moment. There's a fourth version of it where it's canceled out, it's grayed out, it's telling you that this button isn't that important, that you probably is like a side door that you shouldn't press at this point. Um, and you want to make sure that your most important button is always on the bottom right because that's where we automatically go to turn the page kind of on a book. If you put the cancel button or the delete button on that space, people might actually then uh, just press it by, by, um, by pure habit. So you always put the cancel button on the left side um, out of the way. On the mobile, you do have to consider that it needs to be the size of your finger and these are the average finger sizes or just think about it like a dime the size of a dime having a little bit of margin so you don't accidentally press the button next to it so just make, make sure that you have enough space around the buttons to um, uh, do this with, with this ease and like not to have to push it exactly because um, people might be not paying too much attention to it these are um, I'm talking about this later in our own chapter, but cards are really important to bundle a whole lot of information into one section. Um, and also, here you can see a whole lot of information that is very different, so it's, it's hard to design if there's so many different kinds of elements. Um, nothing's ever repeating, and this is all information that comes from different streams of, of input into this one card, but they all belong together because they all belong to this one card, which is a book in this case, the price and the author and the title and so on. And check boxes, um, if you have several on a box, on a page, you need to have check boxes. It needs to be clear that they're not just toggle on off, which is only one or two, like it's only binary, you only have an on and an off. But check boxes have several options at once. Um, like, yeah, it's a, as opposed to um, the, the toggle button where you can only do one or the other. These uh, sliders are very popular. You can, um, the, oh, the tabs on the top. So you can organize things with the tabs, which is also a, a good way on the mobile because you have very little space to, to put things on top of each other. A little dangerous because you're hiding the content once again. Uh, on the tabs there yeah, for the mobile, you can have several. On a desktop, it can be much wider. So there could be a problem that you have long words in the tabs that don't fit on a, on a, um, on a mobile anymore. Then you have to fall back to icons, which can be confusing and opens up a whole other set of difficult things to solve. Um, comments, and uh, we, we bombard it with them all the time now with, search and, uh, with, with social media and on blog posts, and we always compare our feedback on how many likes we got for, for every post. We, that, that's uh, also coming up, all these pop-ups. And um, drop-downs, uh, they are useful to bundle all of the categories together into one. Um, you can see it like making clear that you have um, like select them here in, in a search for example, you see that example. Feeds now with social media is another thing that, that's become important. Icons are very nice to look at and they give you, um, after all this text and graphics and images, it's kind of refreshing to have some icons to look at more graphical. Um, I have a whole chapter on those too. Loaders, sometimes you need them um, because uh, we still, images still take a long time to load. Um, lately, a very popular thing to do is on the bottom of a news site, for example, to have a fat footer that if you really don't know how you got there, this is like a sort of a mega navigation on the bottom. You don't want to have it too much on the top. They have uh, fat headers too, but that's, I would advise against that because that's just overwhelming to have that much information. But all of those little terms and conditions and, and little contacts and, and, uh, and so on, all this information can all fit into a fat footer on the bottom. Notifications, we get them all the time now, use them sparingly, of course, because uh, people will get annoyed. Um, now, tiled galleries, I, I use them on a um, site for a, uh, a fashion uh, stylist just lately. Uh, those are very popular um, uh, element. It's like from Pinterest kind of thing. And uh, I think that's all the ones that I came up with. No, I'm sure, uh, for now, but I'm sure uh, I'll leave this as a discussion because we can talk about other ones that are new ones that came up that you might have seen at uh, websites that you find are a better, a new way to use as interface to organize the information, to communicate to the com from the computer to us 
that's like the bridge from us to talk to the computer and backwards and I have a later I have a whole chapter on um, conversation with the actual platforms but we'll get to that later thank you